indicate that marijuana smokers, at whatever frequency, are bad workers. And in fact, um, one of the people whose name is all over the drug testing literature is a woman named Denise Candell. And she was stricken, terrified, to find out that there are four studies in a row that showed that marijuana using workers had a higher wage than non-marijuana using workers. This is interesting, a series of surveys of the National Longitudinal Study of Youth, which shows that marijuana users have higher wages than non-marijuana users. Also a similar study done in Great Britain last year showed the similar outcome. Now, <clears throat> Denise then went back through all four of these studies, two of which the data said she had been responsible for, and she recently published the answer. She was so relieved because she was terrified that the money was going to stop coming to her. But she found out that <coughs> marijuana users chose jobs that were more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they made more money. Say that marijuana really makes you stupid, doesn't it? <laughs> so let me stop uh, uh, my talk and, and I'll respond more to questions. But the point of the talk is that outplay studies have been rarely performed and rarely have they been well performed. Our early focus on the technology of urine testing turned out to not serve as well. And say, well, never serve as well. Never going to win many cases by showing the laboratories were no good or the specimen was mishandled. Every now and then you will. But by and large, those bastards can do this kind of testing. After all, it's paid off very well for them. The kind of studies that we needed, outcome studies to show that testing made a difference, are of two sorts. They're either so dreadful that they never should have been published. That's, I mean, most of the NIDA studies contained in the 1989 monograph were never published in the scientific literature, including the Southern Pacific Rail Study, which showed after urine testing, the rate of reported accidents went down. And then two or three people who worked for the Brotherhood of Railroad Trainmen, the National Transportation Union, showed that at the same time they imposed urine testing, they increased the penalties for voluntarily reporting accidents. So if you reported an accident, which you've been encouraged to do before, now you've got punished much more severely. And guess what? The rate of accidents went down. Sure as hell. Those are the kind of studies that NIDA funded in the 1980s. They don't fund any outcome studies anymore because the answers are sufficient. But in recent years, there have been some reasonably adequate outplace outcome studies. And they show that at least in terms of the kind of drug use that occurs in American industry, which is mostly marijuana use, there is no evidence that firing those people sanitizes the workplace. And there is significant evidence that such testing identifies people who are by and large good workers and there is no reason to proceed on. But then I leave you with a caveat to remember that the war on drugs, and I took this line years ago from Arnold Treback, is a crusade. And the critical thing to remember about a crusade is that it's only important to fight. It's not important to win. And if tomorrow, there is an adequate outcome study to show that drug testing is not worth anything, it won't matter to them. Because they feed on failure just as much as they feed on success. And our battle is more than just doing adequate science, because doing adequate science is not sufficient enough to make them stop. Thank you, John, for that very enlightening uh, speech. Uh, our, our next speaker is a uh, professor of economics at Lemoyne College in Syracuse, who uh, wrote a paper uh, specifically addressing the question of drug testing and workplace uh, productivity, which came to some very interesting conclusions, which he will share with us. Ed? Well, thank you. My name is Ted Shepard, and I'm an economist uh, with Lemoyne College. I usually don't do a lot of public speaking. Um, I usually would just as soon 
stay in the privacy of my home, <laughs> doing whatever it is I do. Nobody's a business but mine. But, um, let me just say it's a privilege and an honor to be here, and uh, it's going to be a hard act to follow the, the people uh, who uh, you've just heard. I'd, I'd like to say this is a humbling experience, but actually it's going to be a big ego boost because of the uh, people who uh, they're putting me on here with. Um, well, let me get to the point. I know that uh, they asked me to be here because they were interested in the uh, drugs testing and productivity study that I was involved with. My background does not come out of the drug reform movement, um, although the reason they wanted me here is because I think they like what I have to say. Um, over the past 10 years, I've been involved in a series of applied productivity studies <clears throat> on quite a variety of issues. Profit sharing, flexible work schedules, overtime hours, work and family programs, and uh, drug testing was really the latest in a series of applied productivity studies that I conducted uh, with my uh, research partner, Tom Clifton, who's a professor of industrial relations at Lowen College. What, why we began this study uh, was because there was a tremendous uh, contrast between the claims that were being made by the government and the drug testing industry, and what the uh, scientific studies uh, appear to indicate. We really started out with a careful review of the National Research Council report on the Committee on Drug Use in the Workplace that they have a very good summary of in the uh, ACLU uh, report. So in that report, it basically uh, concluded that there was a great deal of uncertainty about two things that are relevant to the issue of drug testing. One, whether there are any preventive effects of drug testing. In other words, does drug testing have any impact on drug use in the workplace? And the second issue that's very relevant is, is whether drug use has anything to do with productivity in the workplace. And on both of these questions, um, there, there was a great deal of uncertainty, and also there had not been any studies that specifically dealt with random testing. But before doing any statistical analysis, and uh, I'm not going to go into the technical detail uh, of the uh, model that we applied. For those of you who are interested in, in uh, learning more about it, the full study is available online at the Linda Smith Center uh, website, their online library. And the, uh, there's a paper that they have out there which lists the uh, website address. Um, so I encourage you to uh, read that if you want to get more of the technical detail that I'm going to be providing you here. Um, so, before even beginning the statistical analysis, it was important to really explore the uh, theoretical arguments for why you would expect an effect of uh, uh, drug testing on productivity. And without, before learning more about it, we, we considered all the possible reasons why you might have a positive effect, why you might have a negative effect. On the uh, positive side, why there might be a positive effect on productivity arguments that you've probably heard before. Uh, the reasoning is that uh, based on the idea that perhaps drug testing does have a preventive effect on drug use and that drug use does have harmful effects on, on uh, productivity. None of that had ever been demonstrated, but that was the potential uh, reason why you might end up with a positive effect. There are also a number of reasons why drug testing might have a negative effect on productivity. And uh, we identified uh, quite a few, and, and many of those uh, we uh, uh, learned basically by trying to uh, read materials that had been written by a lot of other people, some of whom are, are in this room. Uh, one reason why drug testing might negatively affect productivity is because it could have an adverse effect on overall morale. It's a very negative uh, approach. It basically is a lack of trust, and uh, quite a few productivity studies that indicated that companies that deal with workers in a positive, progressive manner get greater performance in return. Companies that pay workers more have been shown to get higher levels of productivity. Companies that provide profit sharing or flexible work schedules. So uh, one possible reason was that it created a negative work environment. A second reason why um, drug testing might uh, end up harming productivity is because it's possible that uh, uh, drug use is positively, not negatively, associated